Hi again, I'm Gwendolyn, and this time I will be watching and reacting to season 17, episode 9 of Sister Wives. We drove for six days. Oh, North, this is place for the surgery purposes? No, North Carolina. That was embarrassing. She already got her surgery. They've been cooped up in a car for hours. They are so loud in hotels. Um, if you hurt her, it's... Yeah, that's always been a problem. Sue'd often like threaten, whisper at us when we went to shopping places ever. She'd be like, stop, you're embarrassing me. Shut up. In like a loving way. Isabel's moving to North Carolina. Isabel has just bonded that's with Maddie and Caleb. Cute. She's gonna go to college about 15 minutes away from where they live. Yeah. Surely how bad you feel with your sister. I'd say about a seven. So I think this seven out of ten basically means I'm gonna miss her a lot. I, th I like how she said, I think the 7 out of 10 means, like, girlfriend, you were the one that said it. Isabel and Truly have gotten a lot closer. When I told Truly about the divorce, Isabel was the first person she talked to. I'll be staying there for You'll maybe four years tops. I ended up being two years, I'm pretty sure. She finished community college and then went to Utah. I think I'm also nervous about how I'm going to live without mom because I do depend on her, like, too much. Me too. You can't see How me are you feeling about moving and everything now? I still don't want to. Yeah. I've grown up here in a flag staff. I've gotten used to it by this point, so I'm gonna really miss it. She's literally so stylish. I should start wearing mushrooms more. So we're in North Carolina at Maddie and Caleb's house in Isabel's bedroom. It's actually kind of cute. It actually is. I'm super close to Janelle's older kids. When Janelle was working all the time, I just helped raise them. Hunter is always somewhere with the family. If there's like an event happening, he's there. I, that's the funniest thing I think about him. Like the funniest and sweetest thing. There's nothing that can prepare you to say goodbye. I'm not ready to have her go. She's so cute. She cries every time she drops us off somewhere. Like to go to college or to move every single time she leaves. It's adorable. And you guys thank you for giving her a safe place to start her adventure. Absolutely. When she was going through it, she sought out me. Not that it's a bad thing, but I think that she depended on me. And so I think it got quite heavy in the house and it got very emotional. It's hard for a young kid to see their mom in such a sad state because the last year was really hard. I still resent the photographer for making us put our hands on our hips. It's good for her to be able to live with herself instead of needing me and also for me to not need her anymore. Big kid times for real. I need to tell all the wives and Cody that I'll be moving next week. <laughs> I could literally tell that there was that a coming up scene was coming up. I bet Tim's like, you need to say something to preface the next scene now. I think that's what like makes him start it. Cause there's no way like naturally she'd be like, yeah, I need to tell the wives. That's adorable. But then again, so is everything in the entire planet. Also, I'm so nervous for the episode. I've, I've gotten a lot of comments that are like, oh, if you like Robin now. My best friend is here and we decided that we should film a conversation of us chit-chatting and being stupid because it's what we do best. Well, they do that a lot on Instagram lives or they did that a lot. I don't know anymore. And honestly, I don't do this very many people. I want to see it. Do it. I've That's had so those cute. kind of relationships within my family. Oh, 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 oh my God. Stop. We used to be so cute. But my family oh my is kind of weird right now. And relationships are weird. Jen basically knows everything about my life. So yes, we decided that we would stay for the summer and I would help run the B&B and the kids fell in love with it and um, I kind of fell in love with it too. Jen is slay for that. Her coming and staying and managing the inn for me is really gonna take a lot off of my plate. I do know Jen. I do know Jen. She's just very, very loyal to Mary. I don't know if she's given her good advice or not, because <laughs> I don't know. She needs a relationship outside of their sister wives, for sure. I'm glad that he's, like, supportive of the fact that she has a friend. But he's, like, rude about it. She is not my sister wife. Wait, does that mean you can't be a sister wife and be a BFF? Sorry, Robin. <laughs> That's not what I meant. <laughs> Robin. Oh. 
What does that mean? Marinating in my brain. Like literally when mom died, she dropped everything and she's like, okay, I'll be there. Oh my God. I thought she meant like that grandma Bonnie dropped everything. And I was like, she had no choice. She couldn't control it. But that's not what she meant. It didn't matter that there was COVID. It didn't matter that well, I was like hundreds of miles away. It did not matter. I mattered. Period. And it feels good to matter to somebody. And you deserve to matter to somebody. I love that. I got an offer on my house. Cody knows. And now that Isabel's gone, I'm just going to move her bed into Gwen's old room and sleep there instead. Wow, they really stole my bedroom. That's fake. Like, I moved out. I get it. But... That's fake. She's still sad we're moving, but she also knows there's really nothing she can do about it except accept it. Okay, 10 year old. Hey, this? I'm 11. She's 11. <gasps> wow. Okay, so this makes it less weird that my dad got it wrong. I guess it's just a thing with parents. They get their kids' ages wrong sometimes. Yes, I'm taking Truly, and that's really the only thing he has to say in. Every time I come into town, he can have her, but I don't know. We haven't seen him since we got back. She hasn't seen Truly for two and a half weeks. We moved Gwendolyn without him, all of it, and I'm like... She was so stressed out when we were moving. Life is passing you by, <gasps> and we're leaving. I don't want to go over to Christine's house, but I don't have a place for Truly. She can sleep on the couch. It doesn't have anything to do with She's me not, not like wanting needy. to see Truly. It's really more about just struggling to be around Christine. You sit on a throne of lies. All I know is that I'm moving forward and I'm moving to something better. And that's enough most of the time. Nice. Cody, Mary, Janelle, and Robin are all coming over because I need to tell them that my house is now under contract. Mentally preparing yourself. That's so real. Me, Janelle. Hello. I feel angry and I feel like I understand where she's coming from. And I also know that anger is a secondary emotion. I'm hurt that she doesn't see value enough in our family. I'm angry about Christine leaving the family. Anger is a secondary emotion. I put the house on the market and it is now in contract. Yay! I accept That's the offer. Good. That's so sweet of Janelle. So supportive. Why is Janelle saying yay? She's supportive. I apologize. I am moving next week. Excuse my potty mouth, please. That was so funny. She said, It's just one of those things where I'm just like, I, there's nothing I can do here. Yeah, but it's you know, like, it's. I'm not it's, going to express okay. my undying love for her. Please come back because I don't even like her right now. Then let her go. Oh, what? Oh my God. Jealous of Christine that she's leaving and I can't because I can. I can do whatever I want. Period. My strength is sticking around and seeing if Cody would be willing to work on a relationship. Wait for it. Wait for it. I am the one thing in life I can't control. It's getting Aaron Burr. When Christine first told Truly we were getting divorced, Truly was very upset. She was more upset about moving than about Christine and I being divorced. He said that, like, as if he resents the divorce or resents Truly. What did but Christine do that made... There's no difference. Truly go, oh, this divorce is okay. Nothing changed. I was sitting there talking with Truly, and she's like, well, you and mom and her are divorced. I'm like, okay. I didn't realize... I didn't realize. It was a little bit news to me. How is it news to you? Yeah, how is it news? That we're just divorced. Oh. We never made an official agreement. She doesn't need your consent to break up with you. All of a sudden, it just sank into me that she's just like, so we're divorced. Every single episode, he gets it. Every single episode, he's like, all of a sudden, I understand. Do you? Usually, our church would say you're divorced. You have to go ask for a divorce. Not if you're no longer Mormon. Christine just saying I'm divorced is sort of invalidating our beliefs. That's true. I get that. It's not intentionally invalidating, though. Like, she is allowed to decide that she is no longer part of the church, especially when she was excommunicated by them. She does not have to do any of this. You know, as far as I know, it's just that your divorce has to be recognized. But Christine has left the faith. The rules don't apply to her anymore. Right. She's not in the faith. Like, sometimes even before you're, like, legally divorced on paper, the couple has already moved on. And they're like, yeah, we're basically over. Neither of us are part of that religion anymore. So me just saying I'm divorced... I don't see the problem in that at all. There's nothing else to be done is a thing because she's no longer part of it. So this is a little different. The thing is, it is different and it's weird. Like, how do you divorce a polygamous family when one of the persons no longer is part of the church? At that point, it really is just a 
say it and done. Well, the closure that she's saying that she gets is that she just decides and he just kind of goes along with it. Like Cody and I are in this situation. We're not legally married. I want to work on the relationship, but Cody has basically said that he doesn't. Does that mean we're just not married anymore? And he would poop for that. That's not how I consider it. Period. I feel like we're still married. Exactly. Yeah. I don't really consider myself married to Mary. If she wanted to move on and marry another, she wouldn't get an argument with me. Then stop. I don't believe that we can ever be functional. The thing is, he's just leading her on at this point. And I don't believe that I will ever be emotionally safe with her. Then tell her! Oh my god! <sighs> I guess in some ways I'm just sorry we dragged it out so long. I'm not. Because really? I feel like everything that you guys Janelle did- Janelle is so, like she speaks and she lets her voice be heard. And I love that so much. And I think that her and my mom are an amazing team for being able to help each other get to that point. I think it was really important because the biggest thing that we have all produced is this cohesive group of kids. They're not cohesive. Leon. Payton. Dayton, Aurora, Brianna. They don't fit in well with the rest of the family. Three of Janelle's kids are close to three of Christine's. I was completely spacing out at this point, so I just processed what he said. <laughs> and I thought I'd share my thoughts. So he's beyond wrong, obviously, and Janelle's about to make a good point about why he thinks this way. But the only one in the family that has been separated by something outside of their control is Payton. And that's for good reason. Leon has given themselves space for their emotional health, and Robin's kids are separated because of her own doing. I think there's a lot of potential that they will be through their whole lives. I think those years were valuable to have those kids be home and have a nuclear family. He sees everything That's from this question. perspective of Robin and her kids. And they have this really weird perception that her kids have been so slighted. Robin, me, and my children are all connecting constantly. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an energy of connection. It's like that scene in that movie with Jack Black, School of Rock, where he's like, I, your kids touched me. And I hope that I touch them. He's like, we're connecting. <laughs> what does that mean? Cody favors Robin. That's not even a cool statement. It's that she communicates and her children communicate. They involve me. Well, it's easier to communicate when you live in the same house and you constantly see your father. So. Yeah, I can see being grandma to all of these babies still, regardless if they're my biological grandkids. To me, they're still my grandbabies. We're not functioning as a family anymore. We haven't for a really, really long time. It's not just Cody and Christine. And I'm just gradually getting clued in. I actually had to find out from Madison that you had been saying that you were thinking about leaving. That's what happens when you don't pay attention to your other wives. COVID may have changed things, but I was always here. I was always involved. Why would my children be trying to talk her into leaving me unless she was telling them that she was in a loveless marriage? that Who and said I to you, why are it you doesn't just... matter thing is she never said that to me and I never was like you should leave dad I was just always like I don't like my dad I don't like that you are with a guy that I don't like Cody, your kids here's the thing several I... of your kids is that what you want to hear why were they asking the kids were like it looked like in Vegas that you and dad weren't really close anymore yeah because they've been paying attention and in Vegas uh-huh okay that's and a I'm lie like... okay well <laughs> You know, I don't know exactly why she's saying I'm lying. Cody and I did struggle in Vegas, and my kids did see it. Yeah. I'm pretty sure Robin maybe misunderstood something that Christine said. Well, I've been aware that there's been problems for a long time. For a long time. Well, I, mean, I had no aware. idea. I feel like if you see, if your life is great, you don't really notice when others' lives aren't as great. Because you're just seeing through rose-colored glasses. And then we've had so many more realistic conversations that happened last year between Cody and I. On and you guys don't talk, though. You guys don't communicate. So why should she stay with him if they don't communicate well? We've communicated better the last six no months. Like, really? Don't you think so? No, not at all. I think so. I've seen it. Uh, please stop staying here. Your stuff is out. I'm leaving. We're breaking up. It's all been in her court. She has just had control of everything over that. But she still, she still communicated it. Just because she's like the one like leading the charge and she's one like taking control of her own life doesn't mean they're not communica communicating. Okay, whatever. That's your guys' relationship, but don't lump all the other relationships in with it. And that's I never not said true. that. She never said that. You did say that. You said in Vegas, the only people that were close was was 
was she us. Did not say that. And I'm like, whoa, whoa. And I, I'm sitting here wanting to say something, but I don't know what to say. What do you say to that? She's so bad. I would have no idea. I must have gotten confused because I do not know how I got that out of what she said. I think she sees that she was wrong. That's so real. That's very mature. We've been 11 years public. We've worked so hard begging the public to accept our marriage, our family. I think they have. I think they have accepted and they've seen and they've understood the kind of relationship it is and that it can be. Like for some people, it's not good and it's just not been good with my parents. And like some people can have amazing polyamorous relationships, but this was not for my mom. And I strongly believe it wasn't for my dad either. It's got to happen though. I know without a doubt, I have tried for years to make this work. Being a mom is my most important thing. Period. But I couldn't with a clear conscience stay married to someone who had favorites. I love the red. I'm ba I bet she like picked it out. She was like, I need to feel powerful. I'm someone who's breaking my kids' hearts. I needed to stand with them instead. And I wanted to do it for them. Interesting. So much just happened. I think this is like a part one of a two-part episode because it looks like from like the next time thing that this is going to happen again and like more of a conversation is going to happen and I'm pretty sure I've like spoiled the episode a bit for myself or I've seen like people yelling and stuff. I don't even know like I was like so like warped in warped in by the conversation that like I don't even think that I processed thoughts that I should have said about it. So like, all, all I can really say right now is like, Robin, I'm just glad that she like understood that what she said was incorrect. What she like thought she heard was incorrect. Once again, Hunter is adorable for showing up like everywhere. So you'll notice if you start paying attention, it's like, where's Waldo with him? He is, where's Hunter? It is so unfortunate to see like my dad going off about like how he and Mary basically have this done relationship because she doesn't know that. They haven't had a conversation about it. And I think that's what's so important about what my mom did with him. Because she said, we are done. She told him to his face that they're over. And Cody hasn't done anything. He's just letting Mary believe in this, like, fantasy that he's created. That they can somehow work on their relationship. Which is, like, manipulative. It's It feels completely manipulative to me. Because he's basically keeping this information from her and letting her, like, just be in this loveless relationship with this false hope that it's going to be fixed. How does it benefit him to stay with all of these women? Does he consider them trophies? Does he consider them, like, his path into heaven? I don't understand why he feels the humongous necess necessity to be with them still. And I'm just glad that ones that needed to get out of that situation have gotten out of that situation. All right, and after that very long-winded rant, I'm going to be reading the most popular questions. I think I have six now. Uh, not every episode actually needs even five questions answered, if that. But now we're down to six for this one. So Hack Attack says, Cody tries to manipulate your mom into feeling her decision will change the positive impact they've had on the public perception of plural marriage. Do you think he really believes that, or is he just trying to not take responsibility for the fact that his behavior is the re reason for any negative impacts to that perception? It feels very gaslighting. I think he genuinely does believe it's not his fault that anything bad is going on. I think he believes that my mom deciding to leave is the reason that there's, like, ever going to be a bad opinion about polygamous practicers, and I doubt he understands that the way people have seen him behave has made them grossed out by this practice. It's him and the way he treats his women, in my opinion. Then Jade Radmusher, sorry if I said your name wrong, Jade. Cody neglected to go to Isabel's surgery and did not go when she moved to Carolina. What is her relationship with Cody like? Honestly, he doesn't have good relationships with any of his kids, and Isabel's no exception to this. Then Kay says, question, what is Cody talking about when he says Leon isn't fitting in with the family? Lots of people made assumptions about that, but I'm wondering your perspective on why he said that. Leon has been, since childhood, kind of the odd one out in the family because they had no, like, siblings from their mom to really get along with. I, they just probably felt like the odd one out. And also with Leon being transgender and queer in general and being in a family that predominantly practices a Mormon, like fundamentalist faith, Mormonism isn't, hasn't really traditionally been kind to queer people. 
especially with a family that's quite a bit conservative and partially against transsexuality in general. They've just been separating themselves from the situation and been sticking to people that are more safe for them. It's not that they're not fitting in, it's that they have chosen to go to people who they can trust and it's just they've found a safer community for themselves. And then the last one is from Marie. Did it seem fair that your moms were driving beater cars when the show started and your dad had a two-seater sports car? Uh, I think the situation with that might not have been that my dad was, like, being selfish. I think it was just that the moms had mom cars. And I liked, I, I personally liked their cars. My moms still tend to have mom cars. And to me, from what I've seen, my dad's just been kind of the kind of person that wants to show off, even if they don't have the monetary means to be able to do so. And then after that, that is all the questions for this episode. Um, it was pretty intense. I'm pretty sure there's a part two. So stick around for that. Keep your eye out for when my reaction comes out. Please feel free to subscribe if you are interested in this content or if you just want to support me. Send a like. Uh, maybe put a comment underneath. Let me know how this made you feel. And I will be so excited to see you all next time. Thank you very much.